briefcase, briefs, and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. In what turned out to be a landmark decision in 1991, the Minnesota Court of Appeals reconsidered its stance on awarding unemployment compensation benefits in the McCourtney v. Imprimis Technology, Inc. case. As per the new ruling, an employer had to irrefutably establish that an employee's actions amounted to a willful or wanton disregard of the employer's interest to disqualify them from said benefits. Initially employed as an accounts payable clerk, Diane McCourtney found herself fired from Imprimis Technology after a decade of service for missing work frequently. Her offense? A persistently sick child whom she had to constantly attend to. Compounding her struggles, McCourtney's unemployment benefit claims were turned down based on the allegations of misconduct stemming from her frequent absences. Undeterred, she appealed this decision, pointing out that her absences were primarily beyond her control, resulted from compelling circumstances, and thus should not classify as disqualifying misconduct. Imprimis's decision to terminate McCourtney's employment had come after a series of written warnings instructing her to address her childcare issues. Her defense rested on the fact that her absences due to child illnesses were duly excused and were not a result of willful negligence. Despite this, she was given written warnings by the company and was eventually let go. Adding a twist to the proceedings, the court granted Imprimis's motion to dismiss certain pieces of evidence before the bench that had not been submitted to the referee or commissioner's representative below in an attempt to keep the hearing focused. However, it did not impose any further sanctions. The court then not only reversed the previous commissioner's decision, but also struck out all external cross-references to testimonial evidence not submitted prior. Ultimately, the court found in McCourtney's favor. It ruled that her inability to secure regular child care due to her child's ill health did not constitute misconduct. Instead, it spoke of a mother's concern for her child's welfare, a far cry from a disregard for her work commitments. As a result, the court declared McCourtney eligible for unemployment benefits, reaffirming the lower court's broad interpretation of statutes related to unemployment compensation. While this decision did impose an economic burden on Imprimis, it prioritized the welfare of those unemployed due to unavoidable circumstances, thus paving the way for precedent in similar cases. Case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. Visit LSE.law. Elevate your mind. Leave the stress of class.